splat. <laughs> you got yep. you can see where you're at your vantage point at the at the window. Yeah, I'm gonna shout up. Okay, space, guys, space I let the do. fog go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Philo, you've got a uh, a one of these guards in your face, and Coley uh, is out on the ground, writhing in pain, trying to get his wind back and holding his head on top of a. Uh, basically, they're entangled. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're like. His head is in her crotch, and her crotch is in his head. How they fell, you know, on, <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take a swipe at this guy again. Now that I can see him, sure, no disadvantage or anything. Oh, very Ooh, nice crit! Nice. Holy nice. cow! Very Wait nice. for that. One. All right, so yeah, he's he's badly uh, badly injured. Let's go next to the the bandits now. So the, the bandits going to as you, as you strike him with a, uh, I mean, a, this is one of the best hits you've ever hit anyone in combat. And he staggers back a little bit, and you can see the blood, you know, coming from his wound. And he takes a scimitar and he just charges back at you and and tries to hit you. He swings and he hits with a fourteen. So you're gonna take some slashing damage. Ooh, you're gonna take. Uh, maximum damage. You'll take Ouch. seven uh, slashing damage as he re reciprocates that. Off to the next bandit, uh, Trayvok. You, uh, you, this what you felt uh, on your shield was a uh, one of these guards holding a scimitar, and he tries to slash at you, and he misses. I mean, it's just a horrible. You know, you have your shield up. He just. Hits the shields like knocking on knocking on a dwarf's door in his house, just uh, <laughs> nothing. All right, Tempest so, is not with you today. Let's Trayvok. see if he's with me. Morden, uh, fourteen is a hit. Morden's voice comes to your head. You are a traitor for a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Tempest is with me. I will drop. Uh, let's see, six points of damage. All right, he goes down. This guy goes yeah. down. And then I will uh, move, move in, kind man. of take, 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 uh, just kind of see what's going on in this room. I don't see any girl in here. I never saw her in the first no. place, but she just I actually, to be in my here. spell, my other spell is not concentration, so you actually do see her. Yeah, you, yeah, you see the. She, it looks like she's in the bed. Uh, you don't okay. see Curlyella. You. I kind of look Fido. around and say, well, "Where's Curlyella?" Yeah, these two guys are, are bludgeoning one another in front of you. And also in the corner where this where this little green line is, I, I basically put uh, uh, Dawson. He's there hiding okay. between two nightstands, just kind of sitting there hutter, you know, shuddering in the corner. Oh, oh, I, and where's, oh, I'm so, where's the girl or so where's sorry. the bed or whatever she's in? Uh, basically uh, right up here. Okay. Uh, so I will just kind of get next to uh, Thilo and uh, and Bandit Three, and I'll be I'll sure. be done. Okay. Right. Uh, so now the fog clears. Gildan will come into the room and take up a position surrounding poor Bandit Three. Sure. <laughs> Too bad there's no uh, gangbang bonus, huh? Like in uh, a. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know if I want to do that with Bandit 3, but I'll try to just poke him with a rapier instead. My group called it the gangbang. <laughs> so I'll do that. See, Sounds a little the, bit more company family friendly. Shudder every time they hear one of their game masters running their game say gangbang bonus. I can just see the pinnacle company just shuddering. Oh, nice hit as you lunge. All right, away so I'll, I'll kind of grab him by the shoulder and slide the rapier up through his heart from behind. All right. He goes down. He he just slides right off of your ap rapier like a like a uh, meat and vegetable shish kebab, and he falls over dead. You guys are out of combat. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Nope. I'm, I was just saying you're out of combat. You you have the floor. You guys have the floor. I, I get up and and try to sling the girl over my shoulder, and I look up at the window, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Where's Curly uh, on, uh, girl? Uh, I guess the girl's right here. Philo is going to go over to the corner where Watson or whatever his name was. I don't remember the butler. Dawson. Awesome. <laughs> Dawson. Awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. Uh, and he's just going to grab Dawson, who's slumped down in the corner by the by the collar, and he's just going to start dragging him to the window and tell him that he's going with us. 
Uh, okay, okay. I, I, I am sorry. Uh, the lady. Uh, please do not let the lady die. Uh, I, I did not mean for any of this to happen. Uh, uh, this is all because of me. I, 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 I have betrayed her. But please do not let the lady die. I, 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 I snuck some, uh, some sleeping reagent into her drink earlier in the library. Uh, she has to be saved. Please do not let her die. Uh, she, she should be asleep in her room. So that's why she never came down. Yeah, I'll say I'll get her, and I charge out of the room. Okay. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Travok. Okay. How about we? Uh, I think this is a good stopping point to take a break. How about you guys uh, want to take a about a uh, about a fifteen minute break or so, a little bit more or so. All right. So you guys are you guys are out of combat. What uh, what say you? Adventurers, uh, Trayvok and Gildan were running to Lady Culkin's room um, after uh, Dawson said that he drugged her. Okay, all right. Where is? And I was else? dragging Dawson off to the window. Okay, Dawson. Okay, you're dragging him uh, to the window. What about? Uh, uh, so it was a uh, Gildan and Trayvok, right? You two were going to uh, Lady mm -hmm. Culkin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Philo, you are dragging Dawson, and you know you don't even have to drag him. He willingly, you know, he willingly uh, goes to the window with you. Now, I guess you were going to start climbing down the the rope. Uh, well, I want Dawson to go first, but then yeah, I'll follow right okay. after him. Let's let's see how Dawson fares with his uh, with his uh, strength check. Yeah, you want to land on him, not the other way around. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So, <laughs> Dawson he fails his. Uh, he says, "I thought you were going to carry me down." Ah! And then, he, and then Dawson <laughs> he, he he falls uh, twenty feet, and Dawson he's he's in bad shape. He's he's writhing in pain. Now, as this happens, uh, Curlio, give me a. A saving throw, really quick. A Constitution saving throw. Another one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. a little bit better. Last so, uh, yeah, you you uh, all of a sudden you feel a poof, like a sort of like a slight pinch in your neck, and you're like, "Ow, a bug!" What? And you feel that there's a needle in your neck. Uh oh. Yes, a needle is hanging out of your neck. Okay, I'm going to uh, curl up in a ball with the girl, and I'm going to uh, cast that. If I have time, I'm going to cast the <laughs> minor illusion. Do I, do I have six seconds? <laughs> you do not have enough time uh, because you oh. basically black out. And, okay. you know, as you're, you know, I don't know what you're doing up top there, Thilo, uh, as you just, you know, saw the old man fall down 20 feet. Uh, looks like Curlioa is also out for the count as well. Um, and I don't see the cause for Curlioa going out? No, <laughs> no. He just kind of falls over. Fall over. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, uh, I'm out the window too. Okay, give me a strength check. This will be fun. Nope. Oh, you failed your strength check too. <laughs> Go ahead and roll, uh, nope. roll 2d6. You'll take some bludgeoning ones, damage. Double ones, snake eyes. All right, yeah, so you take a six, six. little bit more. Take a little over halfway. Now, also give me a, a constitution saving throw. Uh, as well as you feel something hit your neck. Okay, now, as this happens, you feel something hit your neck. You, ow, what the hell? And then you black out as well. So, oh, dang. wow! Both of yeah, it's some, so it's some pretty po potent stuff. Now you black out as well, Philo. Curleo's right. blacked out. Both of you out of the equation. Uh, There's right like a pile side. of bodies beneath the window. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to the interior of the Colkin estate. Now <laughs> we have Trayvok and Gildan. You two are at the door of Lady Colkin's room. Her door's locked. I will tell you that. Her door's locked. Uh, 
I will smash the the door handles with my warhammer. Okay, you take a couple hits. Whoosh, whoosh. Handles fall off. The doors push open. Now, right. beautiful room, right beautiful canopy bed, dark wood. You know, fine dressings everywhere, linens on the, you know, the tables and her, her dressers. She has several stand-in closets. Uh, there's a, a table that rests on each side of the bed with oil lamps that are lit. Uh, there's also a, a book that's face down on, on one of the tables. And Zora Colkin is asleep in her bed. She's just sawn logs. And she has not moved. You can see her. She Her body is definitely in, in the bed. Uh, I will go over to her and kind of try to shake her for a second. If she doesn't wake her up, if, if that doesn't wake her up, I'll just pick her up and sure. throw her on my shoulder. Okay. Yeah, you shake her up, and, and all of the shaking, shaking, all of the jostling that you're doing to her does not wake her up. You do notice that she is not dead because she is definitely breathing. She's breathing normally. But she's just in a very deep, deep, deep slumber. And you remember that, you know, Dawson was saying that he drugged her basically back, you know, when mm-hmm. she was in the library. So she's out. She does not wake up. And you guys, I guess, pick her up. You pick a, her up and throw her. A, uh, over your shoulders and head out the door. Yeah, I'll go downstairs and I'm not going to try to go out the window with her. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna head downstairs to the front. And I'll try to cover. I'll ha- I have the bow out, so I'm gonna okay. scout out ahead, look down each area, and then wave him on each time. Okay. So, are you guys going down the stairs, or are you going via? I think we're gonna go down the stairs. Oh okay. um, yeah, stairs for sure. Okay. So as you're going down the stairs, there are several more of these thugs that are running between the oh. rooms, and they see you. So uh, they do see you. They see so, that you're carrying someone out, and they draw their weapons because they are in the middle of uh, looting this place, setting it on fire. The smoke, and thank goodness there's a couple of huge holes uh, on the side of this estate because if there wasn't, it would just be unbearable to be in here right now. But the, the actual structure of this place is suffering. And you guys have been in here for, fighting's been going on for probably 15 to, to t- probably 20, 25 minutes now, you know, since the start of all this. So, you know, you can start to hear the roof starting to creak. There's, you know, some water starting to drip from the ceiling. You know, all of the, by this point, uh, all of the tapestries are basically burnt. And the walls are now starting to burnt. The, the, you know, all of the, the, the frescoes and the paintings on the wall, those are all melted and smeared and running down the walls. And all of these rooms, and, and I'll put you guys on, uh, on floor one here. Let me give you guys this map really quick. <clears throat> and you guys run down the, the stairs. We'll put you guys, oops, I gotta add a, uh, I thought I put a, uh, a grid on here. Putting a grid is really quick. Seeing that, uh, I'm going to give a quick little instructional video real quick, if you don't mind there, uh, guys. But putting a grid on a map is really easy, guys out in the chat, if you guys don't know how to do it. Uh, all you do is you just kind of zoom in on the map. And uh, in Fantasy Grounds, it's really easy to put a grid on there. And you can get it quite precise with the grid tool that it has. So just zoom in on your map anywhere, right click, uh, go to the layer setting, on the radial pop-up, hit that. Uh, at the very bottom, you'll have other options like masking and links and disabling links and navigation. Uh, but for this case, just click on set grid. And when you do that, it's going to put a special cursor. And you want to get towards the middle of the map. And you want to, just for this, we're going to make a quick grid. And just go to the very corner, zoom in as much as you can to get it as precise as you can. And just drag it to the end. Uh, at about, uh, we'll go to about right here. Let go, and voila, look at that. It's uh, put a grid on our map. And I mentioned that also in the top uh, corner of the of the image, there's a, a hashtag. 
open up the hashtag, and that is the uh, grid toolbar. Now, what the grid toolbar does, this is amazing, this is an awesome function. It, you can expand the grid by one pixel, and you can decrease the size by one pixel. I think that's all right. Doug, is that right? One pixel, uh, smaller or mm -hmm. larger. Okay, and all you want to do is if it's off a little bit, we're going to use it like it is right now, but uh, sometimes you'll see that it doesn't line up, and you can use the plus and the minus keys to enlarge the grid that you already have, or you can decrease the size of the grid. And then the sideward arrows, you can move the grid sideways or up and down. So, you know, it's not you just lay it down, and if it doesn't match, you're screwed. you got to redo it again. It's not like that in Fantasy Grounds. You guys have the option to move this around, manipulate the size, and get that grid lined up. So, and sometimes it won't line up, but that's when you have to do a little bit of basic math and start enlarging the map to where in Fantasy Grounds everything runs by 50 by 50 uh, pixels. Everything that, uh, all of the modules that they put in are all based off of 50 by 50. So uh, just take a grid, 50 by 50, and just multiply that by how many grids are going across and then going down, and you ha shouldn't have a problem at all lining your uh, your grid up but uh, there are several tutorials online for that too so but there you go that's that's how you make a really quick grid if you're if you're needing one in fantasy grounds really cool feature the uh, uh the navigation tool you know that's that's the best part about it so all right so i got the grid down let's put you guys there sorry about that interrupting the game like that but i was like hey let's just kind of share yeah, everybody how to make to it talk about it yeah and also about the a couple of people have also talked about, hey, why is the screen blue? Why is the, the screen not a normal color? Well, over here in the, uh, the the navigation, well, not the navigation, but the all of the menu buttons up here in the top right-hand corner, there's one that has a uh, moon and a sun, and it's the ambient lighting inside of Fantasy Grounds. And all you have to do is, uh, it's by default, it's on the sun. And when it's on the sun, you're normal, all right? And uh, normal daylight. And if you want to go to nighttime, just hit the moon, and it switches to the dark blue of, as like to what we've been on the entire game, because it is the middle of the night. If you guys are sitting around the campfire, role playing to death, just click on the the campfire, and then it turns it to like a uh, like an autumn red or something like that. And the last one is if you're under a heavy canopy of trees in like a forest or something, then you would just click on the shrubbery. And it'll take it to like a like a light green, so you can kind of give your players that experience and you know their the thought of their mind of their surroundings, like the ambient lighting around them. Really cool, really cool feature in uh, Fantasy Grounds, also. So, all right, we're back to the light. We're back to the nighttime, the dark lights, and all right. So, Trayvok, Gildan, you've ran down with. Uh, Lady Culkin over your shoulders, and I guess uh, Gildan, you're the mm -hmm. one that has her over your shoulders, or was it Trayvok? Uh, Trayvok. Trayvok. Yeah, okay, it. Trayvok. Okay. And uh, as I was saying, the large rooms, the you know, over on your left and to your right, uh, the libraries on the right hand side, you can see that there's a war machine, uh, no sign of Graven, uh, and you can see that there was some scampering uh, out there. Now behind you, you hear rustling as you're coming down the stairs, and they hear the thud, 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 thuds of, of running. You you hear a, hey, there they are, let's get them! And it's in common. You know, that's not any kind of elvish language or nothing like that. You kind of peer around the banisters, and there are three more of these uh, these thugs that are coming towards you. So we'll go ahead and we'll, there's no elements of surprise there. We'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll roll initiative. Uh, and like I was describing the scene, everything is being destroyed. You can hear the foundation of this place starting to creak and crick and, and everything else. And, you know, there's a lot more going on too. So there's a lot of rooms, a lot of things that are being stolen. Uh, you know, as you guys are running down the stairs, you've seen a couple of people run out the front door carrying, you know, piles of their arms just full of, of, you know, plates and silver chafing dishes and all that other stuff. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's put these, uh, these guys on, on the grid. Uh, the hole from the war machine, is that kind of towards room four, or was that seven? Both, four and seven, yeah, and, oh. and four, it, it also has one, too. And this is uh, this is the, the dining hall. 
and this is you know the, the dining hall has the you know all of the extravishing uh, extravagant furnishings uh, that you know where it had that uh, that hearth on the fire pits on the wall there was a, a beautiful dark table that is just smashed into a thousand pieces this war machine all of the tapestries uh, the beautiful red and cream tapestries with all of the the house symbols and whatnot are on fire and inside of this room as you're looking in Trayvok, you can see that there is a a very large slithering snake that is on fire and it's and this thing is basically as it's slithering around the room it is setting more of the estate on fire all right and, and since the war machine came through there mm -hmm. so like if it came through four do we see uh uh, you can see outside. Are there party yeah. members out there? Because they, they jumped out the window right there, didn't they? Yeah, you see the, the war machine is basically blocking your view, but you can still see okay. through all of the wooden beams and the, you know, the leather straps and all that. You can see outside, uh, but you can't see any of your other party members. Okay. But you knew that they were you know, jumping out because you guys had, had discussed that. And then, like I mm -hmm. said, the library uh, is to the west, which is uh, basically room number seven on the map. I'm sorry, yeah, this is the this is the library, and this has you know all of the books piled, and and you knew that uh, your dwarf companion, he was in there too, and Graven is nowhere to be seen. All right. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty scary. All right, so uh, you guys have rolled initiative. Here are uh, the one you know, one of these guys is a huge, this huge guys. You know, he's just glutton. I mean, he's just got no shirt on. He's got like a uh, a couple of leather straps going across his gut. That's like hanging over his. Uh, he's like, there you are. We are smashing, boys. Let's get him. All right, so you've got her over your shoulders, and Gildan, you guys just came down. Hey, get him. Initiative. Bam. All right, who's uh, going to go first? Looks like uh, Trayvok. You've uh, got the jump on these guys. You were almost right. expecting it. <laughs> uh, well, I will dash towards the entryway there, okay. um, carrying uh, Zora Koken. Okay. Give me a give me a strength. No, nah, you don't need to. You're a dwarf, man. You don't need to give me a strength <laughs> check. All right. Uh, so that was six, and then I'll, I'll keep moving as far as I can. Okay. All right. Gildan, uh, let's see. Uh, well, it looks like the uh, the bandits are going to be on you. So, uh, yeah. All right. So the uh, the bandits, the first bandit, uh, runs up and engages Gildan as you're running out. All right. So these guys, one guy has to to dash to get to you. The next guy. 25, 30. Okay. Uh, he gets up to Gildan and attacks. And then as he gets up, he goes, Ha ha ha! Your friend left you to die to the hands of the cloaks. As he I, I kind of laugh back and say, Perhaps he just wanted to give you two thugs a fair fight. <laughs> as he embeds his uh, scimitar inside of your gut. Uh, with a 19 versus armor. The uh, damage you take is going to be 4, and I'll add that to your sheet. Is that all you got? <laughs> There's plenty more where that came from, sucker. And you can hear, you know, the, the big guy, he's starting, to, uh, he's starting to run up, and you can actually hear his heavy footsteps. He says, <laughs> I'm going to get you! And he's just this huge... <laughs> fat guy, man, just running down the hall. He's almost taking up like half the hall. I'm gonna get you, and he's just got his uh, weapon as he's like kind of patting it into his hand and stuff. Big old mace. I'm gonna gut you. All right, so let's see. Uh, the thugs have gone. Looks like uh, Gildan, you're up now, and you're surrounded. Well, you're not totally <coughs> surrounded, but you've got a couple of. Uh, first, I'm gonna use my cunning action to. Uh, disengage and say, well, what? it's been fun, gentlemen, but I must be uh, on my way. So I'll uh, <laughs> disengage and then Love it. I'm going to go ahead. You want to use your cunning action for your bonus action? I would rather use uh, I'm gonna... You could use that instead of burning your action. 
Because you could still uh, use your action to dash and get double movement and the disengage. Well, let's see. Cunning action, let's see. There's you can take a bonus action things. on each of your turns. This yeah. action can be used to take the dash, disengage, or hide. So yeah, same. if same I take that, then I can still do two moves, right? You but can that still way, do your movement, and then you can use your yeah. standard action to dash it. To do another movement. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Good move. And, and as, you got, as you're leaving these guys behind, hey! That's not fair fighting! And then the other guy goes, <laughs> Hey, you didn't even let me get a swing on you, mister! That's this big fat yeah. dude just barreling down the hallway. And these guys are definitely coming after you as well. So, yeah, so that's, you guys that's are 15, and I got 15 more from there. Sounds good. So, you guys are about 15, 20 feet outside of the house. And, you know, you do not see anything around you. But, you, you know, you see the carnage of the estate is just you know, burnt gazebos, and like I was explaining earlier, I mean, it's just, you know, all of the, you know, the beautiful statues of uh, the past, you know, Culkin, you know, men and women are all toppled over, broken and whatnot, you know, all of the, the shrubberies that were decorated into, you know, geese and other animals, they're all, you know, on fire and nothing but nubs, you know, of roots basically shriveled up. Uh, you don't see your, your counterparts, as you are, you know, at the the front of the building, these guys are barreling after you. Although they're not as fast, uh, we're going back to the side of the estate, on the western side, where Curlioa and Thilo, you guys were. Now you guys start to come too, and uh, you know you you guys are are really groggy. You're like, oh, what the hell? Everything is spinning around you. You're, you know, all of your gears are. Nothing's taken, but you notice that the girl is gone. Ravia is gone. That's like the first thing you guys would check to. And you notice yep. that the girl is gone as you come to and you start to, you know, wipe the cobwebs from your head. One one more round, uh, bartender. <laughs> Give me whatever you gave me last time. Give me the good stuff. So the girl's dead. Now eventually... Uh, are you guys, uh, what about uh, Trayvok and Is she Gilliam? dead or is she gone? She's just gone. She's vanished. Okay. Her her body is not there. And before you were able to get your, you know, you I, I remember you were saying you were just wanting to do a minor illusion, but then you blacked out. But you would have, you know, you probably would have lost. I'm not, I don't think the illusion was concentration, so, hey. Yeah, but I probably didn't finish it. So I no, didn't you didn't. Yeah, you just started to, you know, do all of your verbal and semantic requirements, and you were like, "Hey, whoa, something's feeling pretty good around here." Pretty good. <sighs> and then you're, you know, you're dreaming of something that happened like ten years ago. So <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Trayvok will kind of. <laughs> Trayvok will kind of look around, uh, you know, towards the area where they were supposed to be coming out of the window. Uh, not seeing them, he will kind of jump off of the uh, the little deck here and make his way kind of wide around and see if he can see anything over there. Sure. Now, yeah, just as uh, Gildan and yourself, you start to you know move around to the side of the estate, you, you can see that uh, Philo and Curlio are, are are starting to to stand up, and you know you can see this, and they're you know right beside this huge war machine that's embedded into, you know, the, the beautiful dining area there. Uh, you know, this, this snake is slithering around. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, perception check really quick on this thing. <clears throat> what does this war machine look like? like uh, it, it looks like a huge battering ram on wheels. Okay. That's basically what it is. All right. Wow. So the snake, it does notice you guys out there. So this this snake is starting to wither out, and and you know as everybody's starting to congregate, uh, you can you know see this thing starting to slither. And this is a a pretty large snake, probably about eight feet long, nine feet long, and it starts slithering on the the actual uh, war machine and as it's you know slithering along it's now setting this war machine on fire too 
So, you know, this thing starts to, to burn a little bit. There's this huge fire snake there. Uh, you can hear uh, the other guys that were running after you. You can start to hear them, hey, hey, where'd they go? 